A recent study done on largemouth bass may have you thinking differently as to whether you should be adding scents to your lures. One of the biggest questions that we have as anglers is does scent actually help you to catch more bass? At times you see professional anglers meticulously putting scent on their lures as if they were cooking a meal for themselves. And other times you see anglers that say that scent just really doesn't make a big difference at all. There are lure manufacturers that spend hundreds of thousands of dollars creating scents that specifically attract bass. And you have guys at home melting down used soft plastic, putting them in to homemade containers and they still catch bass. So does scent matter to a bass? Will you actually catch more bass by using scent? Are fish attractants a scam? In 2015, fisheries biologists at Carleton University in Ontario, Canada, wanted to determine how largemouth bass are able to locate their nests after being caught by anglers. The findings of this study show us just how important the sense of smell is to a bass's survival. So let's dive dive into it and see what the science says. During the spring of the year, you will find many bass in shallow water. Typically, a male bass is going to build a nest, then he will coerce a female bass to lay its eggs in the nest. Once the female lays its eggs, they leave, and the male will often protect the eggs until they hatch, and oftentimes for several weeks and months after they hatch. During this period of time, male bass are extremely aggressive because they are constantly guarding their eggs and or the baby bass from predators. This aggression also makes them extremely susceptible to anglers and angling pressure. Now, most of the time, if you catch one of these bass and immediately release the fish, you will see this bass make its way back to the nest. But studies have shown that male bass can find their way back to a nest from a long distance away, at times up to three quarters of a mile away. But how do these bass actually home in on their nest after being removed? This is exactly what the fisheries biologists wanted to figure out and it also shows us how important the sense of smell is to a bat. Now studies done on cutthroat trout, a fish species that swims from the ocean up freshwater streams to spawn, show that cutthroats will use the sun's position, polarized light patterns, and the earth's magnetic field while in the ocean to home in on their specific spawning stream. But once in freshwater, they primarily use their sense of smell and their vision to home in on their exact spawning ground. So looking at these studies and others, the researchers knew that bass probably used one of three main homing mechanisms to find their way back to their nest, the earth's magnetic field, sight, and smell. So the researchers took to Lake Opinicon in Ontario, Canada during the bass spawning season to test their hypothesis. Now, if you would like to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel and help bring me more videos like this to you, please consider buying some fishing apparel from finfishing.com. Right now, hats, gloves, and shirts are all 25% off. And we also have a new high-performance fin fishing tumbler complete with some awesome silicone sides, perfect for the boat. The mission of this study was simple. Catch male bass from their nest, temporarily treat the bass by blocking one of the three sensory organs from functioning, displace these bass from their nests, and then compare the finding to see which sensory organ was most important to a bass's homing ability. Now, in order to control all outside variables, a male bass was only selected if it had eggs on its nest that were less than three days old. They literally had snorkel watching bass on their nests in order to know this. Also, the quantity of eggs laid in a nest had to be similar as well. No nest that had an abnormally large or abnormally small amount of eggs was used. Also, when it came to one of the three treatments that bass received, they were randomly selected. And lastly, each bass had to be displaced perpendicular to the shoreline exactly 200 meters from their nest. Now, something that is important to know, these bass were all caught off their nest by a snorkeler and each time a bass was removed from its nest the snorkeler would place an egg protector made from chicken wire 
on the nest so that no predators would devour the eggs. The first thing that the researchers did was to catch 15 male control bass. These bass had a simulated treatment done to them, meaning the researchers acted like they were doing a treatment without actually doing anything to the fish. The bass were then released 200 meters from their nest and they were given up to four hours to come back to the nest. Within one hour of the simulated treatments, 11 of the 15 bass had already returned to their nest. And within four hours of the simulated treatment, 13 of the 15 control bass had returned to their nest. After collecting the data from the control bass, 33 additional bass were given treatments in this study. 11 received a vision impairment treatment to temporarily block their sense of sight. 11, a geometric impairment treatment to block their sense of the Earth's magnetic field. And 11, an olfactory impairment treatment to block their sense of smell. Let's talk about the vision impaired bass first. After these bass were caught by the snorkelers off their nest, their eyes were rubbed dry for about 20 seconds with a paper towel. Then a small layer of Vaseline was applied to their eyes. And then their eyes were covered with pink opaque Fixident, which is actually a denture adhesive. It was observed in lab studies that Fixident would stay on a fish's eyes for four to eight hours. Then it would begin to flake off, leaving zero harm to the bass. Again, these fish were released 200 meters away from their nest. And interestingly enough, after being temporarily blinded, 64% of the bass had returned to their nest within one hour. And within four hours, 91% of the bass had made it all the way back. So researchers concluded that bass's primary homing mechanism was not sight. Moving on to the geomagnetically impaired bass, these bass were actually caught off their nest by the snorkelers, but this time a strong bar magnet was adhered between the bass's eyes above the cranial region. Again, they used fixident to adhere the bar magnet to the bass's head so that it would eventually fall off. Because the bar magnet is stronger than the Earth's magnetic pole, it would compromise any magnetic navigation that the bass may or may not have. Once these bass were released, 73% of the bass made it back to their nests within one hour. And within two hours, the remaining bass also made it back to their nests. So researchers concluded that bass did not use the Earth's magnetic field as a homing mechanism. Now, where this study gets interesting is when the researchers impaired the olfactory organs of a bass, taking away the fish's ability to smell. They did this by taking a blunt tip 16 gauge needle and injecting Vaseline directly into the anterior nares of a bass until it came out the posterior nares of a bass, which temporarily clogged up the nares so that no water could pass through them and prohibiting the bass from smelling. Now, this time within one hour of the bass being released, only 27% showed back up on their nest. And after the full four hours, a total of 63% had made it back to their nest within the given time restraint. The researchers wrote down that this was statistically significant in their findings and concluded that bass primarily use their sense of smell to home in and locate their nest. Now, a bass using its sense of smell to detect a nest is obviously different than a bass using its sense of smell to find its prey. The fact is that bass have an extremely good sense of smell. As a matter of fact, bass can smell underwater better than humans can smell in the air. During a different test, one scientist showed that bass could detect just a couple ounces of amino acids mixed with over 6,000 gallons of water. The same scientist, Dr. Keith Jones, who completed his PhD in fish olfaction at Texas A&M University, went right to work after he graduated as the lead scientist at the Berkeley Fish Lab, where his main objective was to find out what scents different fish species were attracted to. Now, Dr. Jones concluded that a bass's ability to smell was not near as advanced as a salmon or even a catfish, which could be considered the most powerful sniffer of all. But after running a number of tests found that scent and taste were an important part of the way a bass feeds. This is something you don't hear a lot of anglers talk about, is what our baits 
tastes like. There have been many laboratory tests done that show if a bass does not like the taste of something it eats, it will spit it out before we even have time to feel it on the other end of our line. So sure, you may catch a few more bass in any given day because of the way that your bait smells, but you actually may catch more bass because of the way that it tastes to a bass. If a bass sees something that is visually stimulating and then decides to investigate it, if it smells right, they are more likely to bite it. And if it tastes right, they are a lot more likely to hold on to it. Now, you might assume that I am just specifically referring to slow moving plastic baits across the bottom. But one test that Dr. Jones did showed that even on moving hard baits, bass were two times more likely to hit that bait if it had sin on it versus a hard bait without sin. Now, I am not saying that you are immediately going to go out fishing tomorrow and catch twice as many bass as you normally do by using sin. But what I am saying is that if you add the right scent to your lures, you are only going to positively impact the smell and taste of your lures, which will only help you to catch more bass. But there is a wrong scent, a wrong fish attractant to use. Any scent attractant you find on the market that is oil-based is pretty much worthless. In order for bass to smell a scent, that scent has to be able to be dissolved in water. As we know, oil and water don't mix. So any attractant that is oil-based, bass legitimately can't even smell. And most of the time, the oily scent will just stay on the surface. Now, are these scents a scam? I'll let you be the judge of that. Now, understanding what gets a bass to eat your bait is only important if you actually know where you should be fishing. And in this video right here, I reviewed another study that shows nearly 41% of bass can be found on this one piece of structure. So if you enjoyed this scent video, you will probably enjoy this one too. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give this video a like and comment below. I'll see you guys in the next one.